Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I am here bringing you Arduino lesson number 19. Hopefully you've tuned in for the first 18 lessons. If you're new to the Arduino, you probably need to go back and catch up on those lessons. If you're adept with uh, programming the Arduino and just want to learn how to use an LCD display, you can just jump right in with me on this video. Uh, if you remember in lesson 18, what we had done was we built a device, a circuit to measure distances, and we did that with an ultrasonic sensor. The ultrasonic sensor sends out a ping, <clears throat> and then it looks for the return ping to bounce off of something, and then based on the time that the ping travels to the target and back, you can calculate the distance to the target. And what we had done in, uh, in this uh, lesson number 18 is that we had displayed our results using a servo, and the servo had a little arrow on on it and that little arrow would move back and forth on the servo and display the distance and so it's kind of a cool way to to get to know how to use a servo and play with the ultrasonic sensor uh, what we're going to learn today is we're going to learn how to use the LCD display. And the cool thing about an LCD display is it really lets you sort of kind of break free from your computer monitor and you're not sitting there having to have, have it hooked to a computer and not having to sort of be tethered to the serial monitor to get, you know, to get uh, information back to the user. By having an LCD display, you could hook this whole thing up to a battery and you could sort of go mobile with your project. And all of a sudden, your project starts acting a lot more like a real product. It's capable of autonomous operation. It doesn't have to be tethered to, uh, to a computer to use. And so learning how to use an LCD is a pretty important thing. <clears throat> the LCD that we're going to be using is the LCD from the SparkFun Inventor Kit. Hopefully you guys have picked up one of those SparkFun Inventor Kits. If you have, then you can just exactly do what I'm doing in this, uh, in this lesson and everything should work. If you don't, if you have a different LCD, <coughs> for this lesson to work, you need to at least have a similar one. A lot of these are, are, are very, very similar. This one is a 16 column by two row uh, LCD display. And if you have a 16 by two, chances are it's very, uh, it's very similar to this. The real trick in getting these things to work, the trickiest part is to hook them up. And it's not that complicated to hook them up there's just a whole bunch of wires and when you start getting these wires running everywhere it's real easy to lose track and so I'm just going to tell you that you've got to be really really careful on this project it's not hard but what you got to do is you got to get you a big glass of iced tea or maybe I like a good strong coffee and take a deep breath and kind of Okay, I'm going to take a few minutes. I'm going to be careful. Don't rush it. Put every wire in carefully. Check it. Work with a buddy. If you're in my class, work with a buddy. Have them check yours. You check them. You know, sort of one person looking at the, the schematic and the other person checking it. And I think that if you work with someone else, there's, else there's a lot better chance that, uh, that you'll get it right. This is one that as I work with students that it seems like students have a tendency to make a mistake in here and get frustrated and you just gotta slow down and you gotta check your work, uh, you gotta check your work carefully. Okay, it's a good start. Hopefully you're using the same, uh, you know, the same LCD as I am and then it'll be a whole lot easier. The next thing that we got to do is we got to get this thing wired up. And I've got mine wired up, and I'll help you get your yours wired up. The first thing to understand is how the pins are numbered. And on these like this, there are 16 pins. And if you have the one from the SparkFun Inventor Kit, the when you have it oriented, like I have it oriented down here, okay, the upper left pin is pin 1. So this is pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, up to pin 16. Pin 1 is VSS. If you have a different LCD, then you need to look at the spec sheet or the instructions that came with it. And maybe for yours, pin 1 is not VSS. Maybe VSS is somewhere else. But the key thing is, wherever VSS is, it needs to be hooked to ground. And wherever VDD is, it needs to be hooked to 5 volts. And so if you don't have this pin layout, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that your VSS, whichever pin that is, is hooked to ground. Your VDD is hooked to 5 volts. Your V0 is hooked to the pot pin. And you will be able to, uh, to get it to work using this table. And if you are a more visual person, you might want to look at this, and this will show it to you as well, that here is the LCD. You can see that 
VSS is pin 1 and that should go to ground. Pin 1 right here goes to ground. I have my top row set up as a ground rail with the Arduino and I have my second row hooked up as a VDD going to 5 volts from the Arduino. So first column, first pin hooks to ground, second pin hooks to 5 volts, third pin hooks to the center tap of your uh, potentiometer. The value of the potentiometer doesn't matter. This is the one from the SparkFun Inventor Kit. The pin 3 goes over to the center tap of the, uh, of the potentiometer. We're creating a voltage divider here and so the top leg of the potentiometer goes to 5 volts, the center goes over to this pin 3, and then the bottom leg goes to ground. So you've just created a voltage divider. This is really important because this, uh, this LCD, this is basically setting the contrast of the LCD, and you need that or your, your device is not going to work. And I'll come over here and show you. Here's my potentiometer. If I turn it down, you can see the screen, screen sort of blanks out. If I turn it up too high, it just blanks out uh, with bright uh, uh, too much brightness and so you kind of turn it down until those squares just disappear you see here I'm still seeing the squares and so I turn it down till the squares just disappear and then that I think I can get a little brighter than that right there that is just perfect okay so you want that and then similarly go across looking at this and looking at the table and getting your LCD hooked up what we're going to do is we're going to break this into two lessons. Lesson 19 we're going to do today and we're just going to basically get the, the LCD talking to the Arduino and we're going to get it to where you can print something on it. Like what you can see over here, I'm just printing a little countdown timer and a little count up timer. And so that's what we're going to do today. But don't take your uh, your uh, ultrasonic sensor circuit apart because then in lesson 20 we're going to have this working. We're going to have your ultrasonic sensor are working with your uh, with your display. If you're just interested in how the display works, all you need to do is just follow along in uh, lesson 19 today and hook things up like this. Okay. Now, once you get it hooked up, it's pretty straightforward uh, to uh, get it set up here on toptechboy.com lesson 19. I sort of go through the commands. You need to up at the top include the library. You need to then create your LCD object. You need to then begin it in the, in, you need to basically turn it on or initiating it, initiate it in the void setup and then uh, tell it where you want to print to and then issue a print command uh, LCD print whatever you want to print. Okay let's let's go in and, and that's just a quick overview let's just go in and, and, and let's do the code I mean come along with me uh, get your thing set up you might need to pause and get your circuit set up and then and then come back and just code code up uh, with me here as I go through it and I'll, I'll explain things step by step. Okay, the first thing that you're going to want to do is, is that for this to work, for this LCD to work, you need to use the LCD library. This is one of the libraries that comes with the Arduino software, so you don't have to download the library. It should already be there. How do we put a library in? You put the pound include. Okay, pound include, and then open bracket. What is this called? This is called liquid crystal and look at that, it turns orange saying that it recognizes that library, that's good, dot H, and then close your brackets, and then put in your comment, what we're doing is load the liquid crystal library, okay? Now, after you've loaded the library, what you have to do is you have to create your liquid crystal object, right? You got to tell it, I'm going to have this object, this liquid crystal object that I'm going to work with. So you give it the liquid crystal command. And I misspelled it because it didn't turn orange. Okay, I put that uppercase, which it shouldn't be. Okay, now it's orange, it recognizes it. Now you name the object. The good thing is you can name it anything that you want. You could call it my display, you could call it my LCD, you could name it whatever you want. I'm going to call it LCD all uppercase. You call it whatever you want, but whatever you name it up here, that's the name you have to use throughout the program. So now we got to tell it what the pins are. And just go with me here and then I'll explain it. It's 10, 9, 5, 4, 3, Two. Okay, so 
what we're doing here is we're creating the uh, uh, liquid crystal object named LCD. So we named it LCD. All right. What is this 1095432? Two? That's telling Arduino how we have hooked the device up, and that gets back to this table. Okay, and basically what we're telling it is is that the first position, the first parameter, it wants to know where RS is. Well, RS is 10. Okay, so let's come back up here and see if we can call this back up. So this is RS is 10, and then what are we telling it? We're telling it that E is 9. Okay, we tell it E is 9, and then after that, what you're what you're telling it is you're telling it that uh, that uh, DB4 through DB7 are Arduino pins 5 through 2. Okay, and so this DB4 through DB7 are pins 5, 4, 3, 2. And that is what you are doing here in this command. And so if you did not hook that first one to pin 10, if you hooked it to 12, then that should be a 12. So this is just telling the Arduino where you put uh, hooked up those pins. And if you want more deep details, look at the lesson 19. Or you can just sort of take my word for it and go, go, go with me here. Okay. Now, we have a counter, so we're going to be counting up and counting down, so we're going to need a variable for that counter, and it can be an int, and I'm going to call it my counter, and I'm going to set it to zero. Okay, and then what we're going to do is de <coughs> declare your variable my counter. I think that's all we need to do up front. That's pretty much uh, the bookkeeping we need to do. We've got some stuff to do in the void setup. If you're going to use this, uh, if you're going to use this LCD, you have to load the library, you have to create the object, and then you have to start it. Well, what did we call it? We called it LCD. If you called it my LCD, you should put my LCD here. But whatever you call it, the object name dot begin, and then tell it how big it is. Ours is 16 columns by two rows, so we tell it 16 comma 2. Now this is a little tad bit confusing because in math class they typically always tell you to start with row comma column, like row by column, but for these displays they want you to put the column first, so column row. Okay, so we're going to tell Arduino our LCD has 16 columns and two rows. That should do it to turn it on. And now, when you're going to print to this, uh, to this uh, LCD, you need to tell it where you want to print. Do you want to start here, like we did? Do you want to start here? You can print anywhere you want, but you've got to start by telling it where to start. And I want to start here. Okay, now there's two things a little confusing. We start with column, so it's column, column, and row, and then we start with counting zero. And so this, where my M is here, this would be column what? Column zero, because it's the first one. And it would be row what? It would be row zero. Uh, <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's tell it to start there. Okay, so we are going to go to uh, LCD dot set cursor and where we want to go zero zero uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set LCD cursor to upper left corner of display okay so that just means when we start to print we are printing at column zero row zero and if you don't do that, there is no telling where it would end up. So now let's do our first print. So we're going to say lcd.print. This is how we put something on the display. And where are we going to print? We're going to print my timer. Like that. I'm just printing a string to it. And then I open quote my string and then close quote. And then we are going to end in our semicolon. And then we print our first line. OK, 
Okay. Now, why do we do that? Because we only need to print this one time. We can do the counter here over and over, up and down, but you only really need to print that one time, so I put it in the void setup. I think we are good as far as our void setup goes, and so now we need to create our little timer, our little counter. Well, how would we do that? We want to count up to 10, and then we want to count down from 10. How would we do that? We would do that in a loop. We could use a for loop or we could use a while loop. I sort of like using for loops, so I think I'm going to do mine with a for loop. So we're going to go for, okay, and then what are our conditions, our parameters? Well, I set up my counter to be my counter. So we say my counter equal, where do I want to start? I'm going to start counting with one, I think, and then semicolon. And then we want to go as long as my counter is less than or equal to, I think I'm going to count to 10. Okay. And then every time through, my counter equal my counter plus 1. Start my clause. In my clause. I always, when I create a for loop, I always go ahead and create the start of the clause, the end of the clause, and then everything between this open curly and this close curly is going to be the commands that are done in the loop. Uh, if I like to put this closed right when I create the open, otherwise I forget to do it and then I end up with problems and so I just create it right there. And then here where we put our commands that are going to be executed. Hopefully you're getting familiar with uh, for loops at this point, but just remember you need three things. You need the starting condition and then you need to loop as long as this is true and then you need to increment your counter. So I want to start the first time through my counter is equal to 1. I want to loop as long as my counter is less than or equal to 10 because I put the equal there it will go through the tenth time with my counter equal to 10 and then each time through I increment my counter by 1. Okay, So now what do I want to do inside of here? Well I better tell it before I print I better tell it where to go. So I'm going to say LCD and how do I tell it where to print? Set cursor. Okay. And where do I want to print this time? Well, I don't want to print over my timer. I want to print on the second row, and I want to print on the first column. So the first column is column what? It's column zero. Okay, first column is column zero. On the rows, this is row zero. This is row one. So zero comma one would be the first column and the second row. Okay put that like that <coughs> and what we're doing is set cur cursor to second row or let me start with column with uh, first column which is column zero and second row and the second row is row one Hopefully you understand that. I know it can be a little confusing. Now, what do we want to do? We want to do our lcd.print. What are we going to print? We're going to print my counter. Print your counter. And so that will print it there. Then what do I want to do? I want to put my units. <coughs> LCD print, And I'm going to put a space because I don't want the word seconds right against my number, so I put a space there, seconds, seconds. Close that. What are we doing? Print units. All right. So I think that that is pretty good. Oh, and we want this to be seconds, so you want to kind of put a delay in there. This is not perfect, but this is pretty good for delay. Don't forget my colon. Okay and delay by 1,000 seconds, which, which, is, which is one second. So this thing should count roughly as a second. So this will count from 1 to 10. Well, I want to then copy that, because now I want to count backwards. And rather than typing all this in, I will just paste it and then change it. So here's my second loop. I want to count backwards. So I counted up to 10. What do I want to do now? I want to count backwards from 10. So what I start with is I start with 10. And then I want to go as long as I am greater than or equal to, let's count down to 0. What, what you need to see is, is 
is that uh, what you need to see is is that if you're counting backwards, you've got to flip this operator that I want to count as long as I am greater than zero. Up here, I'm counting as long as I'm looping as long as I am less than or equal to 10. Here, I'm looping as long as I'm greater than or equal to zero because I'm counting down. So you've got to think a little bit about the sign of uh, the, 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 the way that these operators point. Okay, And now, since I'm counting backwards, I need to tell it that I'm counting backwards by saying every time I need to decrement <clears throat> my counter by one. <clears throat> and then the rest of this, I think, should be the same. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Ooh, it's happy. I didn't make any mistakes. I'm having a good day. Okay, let's look at this. We are counting up to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then we're counting backwards. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then we're going to count up. 1, 2. So what is something that isn't quite right about this code. I want you to look here and see if you can see where the mistake is. Okay, look at this. We have an extra s. Seconds with two s. Now when you see that, what you initially think is, and this is like how crazy it gets when you're trying to debug things, you're going to say, oh, you misspelled seconds in your string, but, but look at this. I didn't. I spelled it right. Oh, well, you misspelled it in the second one. No, I spelled it right. So where is this second S coming from? Well, let's look at this. <clears throat> right now, this just takes one character to print this, and then you skip a space and you print this. But when we get to 10, look what happens. It's going to scoot it over to the right. You see how it scooted it to the right by 1 to make room for the 0 on the 10? Well, when you did that, then on that one print line, it put this was the last S in seconds, and then it scooted back. The thing is with the LCD display, when you print something, it stays there till you tell it to go away. And so when this moves over, it puts that S there, and then it hops back, that S stays there. And so this is one of the vexing things about these LCD displays is once you put a character there, it's there. And if things are scooting back and forth because your number of, of digits changes, then you can get messed up. So what I like to do is I like to go in and when there's something like, I don't have to worry about the first line because there's nothing changing on the first line. But on this second line, what is a good practice is, is to clear the line and this print it from scratch. And you can clear the whole display, but I don't want to clear the whole display. I just want to clear that one line. And so the way that I would clear that one line would be after I do my LCD set cursor to 0, 1, and then I print, after I delay here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, uh, let's see, where would be the best place to do this? I just think as we come in, to this loop before we do anything else we want to clear that line and so what we need to do is first of all tell it where to go anytime we print we tell it where to go cursor okay and we're going to go to uh, column zero which is the first column row one which is the second row okay so we're going to go there set cursor to <coughs> first column second row all right and now what am I going to do? I'm going to do an lcd.print. And I'm going to clear that line just by printing 16 blank characters. So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm going to close it like that. And this is going to clear the line because I'm printing blanks. Okay. Now after I do that, I've got to make sure that I come back in now and do this until it, you know, so I've printed blanks all the way across here, so I've left the cursor here, so I've got to go back and tell the cursor to go here again. Okay, so I tell it to go here again, and then it'll print the count, and it'll print uh, seconds. But what this is going to do is every time through the loop, it is going to clear this second row. And it happens so quick that it won't really be something that you see blinking, but when it clears it, it's going to take care of the second S problem. And I need to do this on the second one too. 
Okay, so I got to do this in my second loop too. Okay, we're going to clear that row. And now that should take care of this extra S problem. Okay, so now let's look. My timer. Let's zoom in on this, and I think maybe it'll uh, help you see it a little, uh, a little bit better. Uh, I should have zoomed in earlier. Okay, do a quick focus. Okay, so now let's watch this. Okay, so we're counting down seven, five, four, three, two, one, zero, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now watch this as it goes across nine, ten. It moves across, and this time when it moves back, it erases that S, and it erases that S because we printed this blank line here. All right, and so I hope I'm not confusing you with this, but it's just understand that that it's kind of tricky working with these things. And if you end up with something that doesn't right, uh, look right, a lot of times it's a ghost character from an earlier print statement. And if you're having one, just go in and print blank lines. And make sure that you put the print statements like, notice there's nothing really here bet uh, between here and here. I just print it blank and then I print what I want. And that happens quick enough that you really don't see any discernible, you don't see any discernible blinking here. Okay. It's just looking, uh, it's just looking really, really good. Okay. So you see that it's really pretty easy to use these things. The hardest thing is to just get them wired up. The hardest thing is to get all these wires hooked up, hooked up but I've tried to make it as clear as I can in the online tutorial, uh, lesson 19, toptechboy.com. And then uh, you've got to include the library. You've got to tell it where those pins are hooked up. You have to turn it on. On, tell it how many columns and rows and always 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 set your cursor and then remember sometimes you have to print uh, blank lines and so this is looking good I think we are ready to move on to lesson 20 when we're going to hook this LCD up to our ultrasonic sensor thanks a lot and I hope I will see you shortly at lesson 20 take it easy guys